50 years ago, East Pakistan was hurtling towards civil war and then subsequently its liberation, turning that part of Pakistan into a separate country called Bangladesh. There were many contributors to the independence of the Bengali people that happened because of their own struggle against uh, the West Pakistanis and, of course, the uh, help given by Indian Army, Indian government and an agency called Research and Analysis Wing. There were many heroes who contributed to liberation of East Pakistan and independence of Bangladesh. One of them was Ramnath Kao, the founder of Research and Analysis Wing. On Simply Nitin this week, I'm going to focus on the personality of R.N. Kao, who was the founder of RNAW and before that of the Aviation Research Center. You are on Simply Nitin and I'm Nitin Gokhale. So who was R.N. Kao? To describe him in one sentence, he was an intensely private man who built institutions like the RNAW, before that the Aviation Research Center and the SFF, the Special Frontier Force, composed of Tibetan fighters who are guerrilla fighters who are now special forces in the Indian establishment. He was born on 10th May 1918 in what is now uh, Varanasi, what was then called Banaras. He joined Indian police in 1940, was seconded to the Intelligence Bureau in 1947. And since then, his graph, the career graph rose dramatically. He first was seconded to the Prime Minister's security detail as a junior officer, subsequently taking over the responsibility of guarding India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and foreign dignitaries who kept coming to India or going and accompanying Jawaharlal Nehru on his foreign tours. So as I said, Ramnath Kao was recruited into the Indian police in 1940. Uh, he uh, rose through the ranks. He joined the Intelligence Bureau in 1947, became the security head of the Prime Minister's security detail. But his graph dramatically rose in 1955, when Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru deputed him to join a tri-nation investigation into the crash of an uh, Air India plane called Kashmir Princess, which crashed off Indonesia in 1955. It was supposed to have carried uh, the Prime Minister of uh, China, Chow En Lai, and his delegation. But uh, because of some last-minute tip-off, uh, the Chinese Prime Minister or Premier did not travel on that plane, but others did, some journalists, some uh, Chinese officials, and of course the Air India crew, the Indian crew. They all died in that except for one uh, person, the crew, who uh, survived uh, when the plane crashed and the investigation began. The investigation was tri-nation, as I mentioned. Uh, it involved China, the People's Republic of China, India, and Hong Kong, which was then a British colony. That time, Aran Kao, as a mid-30s, uh, mid-career police officer uh, in the IB, was seconded to join the probe on India's behalf. Those six months that he spent in Hong Kong, China, and India, joining the investigation, uh, trying to piece together the uh, disparate investigation and disparate information that was uh, available, made him one of the most well-connected police officers in India. That subsequently allowed him to be deputed to Ghana, a newly independent African country, which wanted to set up a foreign intelligence agency for itself. Again, his organization, the IB, uh, deputed Arun Kao as the first Indian officer to try and set up, to try and organize the foreign uh, service, uh, foreign secret uh, research bureau for Ghana. He spent more than a year uh, in Ghana, followed by uh, stint back home to uh, try and set up and uh, organize the intelligence setup uh, of the IB meant for foreign countries. But come 1962, when India got defeated uh, by China in that uh, one month long war, 
it was felt that uh, an intelligence agency which could uh, give technical and uh, aerial photography uh, intelligence to the intelligence bureau had to be set up rn kao was again given that uh, responsibility by the ib and he set up the arc or the aviation research center which uh, was uh, helped by the united states ironically in uh, 1963 64 uh, it was set up uh, with uh, headquarters at uh, charbatia in uh, orissa from where spy planes supplied by the uh, united states were flown into uh, areas like uh, tibet nepal burma uh, now myanmar and uh, very precious intelligence was obtained by uh, the aviation research center assets so that was the first time that uh, rn kao headed an organization simultaneously this uh, special frontier force uh, which as i said was composed of all the tibetan refugees hardy tibetan young men who uh, were uh, trained uh, first by the cia and then uh, by the special forces of the indian army to be gorillas uh, who would go into tibet behind enemy lines uh, behind chinese enemy, chinese lines in tibet and uh, carry out sabotage carry out uh, saboteur activities uh, of course it fizzled out that the cia uh, took its eyes off uh, in tibet after 1965 and the sff remained under the rnw it still remains under the rnw by 1965 when india uh, was forced to fight a war against pakistan rn kao had become a senior ib official or a senior officer in the ib uh, looking after its external intelligence wing in the 65 war which uh, eventually india won after a hard fought battle across the western frontier with pakistan it was felt that the ib was overburdened the intelligence bureau was overburdened and it needed a separate agency uh, for uh, collecting intelligence from foreign shores from uh, neighborhood uh, the neighbors uh, around india in the subcontinent and um, it was suggested uh, by uh, officials in the prime minister's office uh, pn haksar primarily who was uh, by then by 1967 by 66 67 had become uh, the confidant of uh, mrs indira gandhi who had taken over as prime minister in january 1966 uh, he and rn kao Uh, had uh, suggested that a separate foreign intelligence agency uh, needs to be set up for india to have uh, advance intelligence advance warning advance information about what india's friends and enemies were doing against or for india so it took almost a uh, year and a half for that idea to fructify uh, there was a lot of resistance uh, within the intelligence bureau which did not want to give up its hold on both internal and external intelligence and uh, it took a lot of persuasion and a lot of uh, maneuvering by uh, people like p n haksar who were an authority unto themselves in the prime minister's office and r n kao to steer the uh, organization or creation of the organization called r n a w it was founded on uh, founded in september 1968 uh, and uh, it was given a mandate that uh, it will gather intelligence from foreign shores from foreign countries and um, create an atmosphere where india has advanced information from these countries rnaw uh, initially was uh, manned by people uh, who were seconded from the external intelligence wing of the ib and uh, the rnaw at the insistence of mrs indira gandhi and pn haksar and rn kao uh, started a unique recruiting uh, style where they picked up young graduates from uh, different sources uh, from different universities and also officers from different streams of the government so it wasn't only just police officers who became members of the rnaw or operatives of the rnaw but customs uh, postal department uh, even um, scientific uh, community uh, were tapped uh, for uh, getting recruits into the rnaw the uh, service was then called the uh, the research and analysis service ras uh, where people were recruited directly to join the rnaw of course uh, it took some time for rnaw to get off uh, to a good start but its finest hour 
came in 1971. Aran Kao, who was already heading external intelligence wing of the INB, of the IB rather, not INB, but IB, uh, had already cultivated contacts uh, with Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was then the undisputed leader in East Pakistan, leader of the Awami League political party. Uh, but his right hand man, Aran Kao's right hand man, was P.N. Banerjee, Panishwarnath Banerjee who was known in East Pakistan or among the Bengalis as Nath Babu. Now, Nath Babu and uh, Aran Kao plotted the, uh, I would say, downfall of the Pakistani regime in East Pakistan in association with other uh, actors like uh, P.N. Haksar, like Sam Manekshaw, the chief of the Indian Army, and uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi's leadership, which uh, took a decision to uh, help the Mukti Bahini, the freedom fighters of Bangladesh, to create a separate country. Aran Kao uh, was not a classical, uh, as I call, uh, a spy or an operative who operated behind the lines, under disguise. He was rather a leader who uh, picked the right people for the right job and uh, who was an institution builder. I have already mentioned how he uh, created the ARC, led the SFF in the initial years, and then created uh, the RNAW. He was helped uh, in a big way by his old friend and colleague, uh, Shankaran Nair, who uh, had succeeded him in Ghana and who was a complete contrast to Aran Kao's personality. While Aran Kao was a very private person who hated to be photographed, who hated to uh, go in public uh, events or uh, in parties, Shankaran Nair was an outgoing personality. He loved his drink. He uh, had excellent contacts across the board and more importantly, he had a mole or he had sources within the Pakistani establishment, in fact, within the Pakistani military establishment uh, in the 1970s, which helped India gain advance warning about Pakistani attack on Indian Air Force bases uh, on 3rd of December 1971. In fact, uh, they knew uh, so well in advance, at least two days well in advance that Pakistani Air Force was going to attack uh, the Indian Air Force bases in Western India, in Punjab and Haryana and Jammu and Kashmir, that uh, the Air Force was ready and uh, there was a preemptive action taken by the Indian Air Force. So the moment the Pakistani Air Force attacked, it gave India the reason to start the war against Pakistan on 3rd December 1971. Rest, as they say, is history. India won the war in 13 days thanks to a well-coordinated operation by the Indian Army, Navy and the Air Force and uh, the the kind of uh, background work that was done by the RNAW, which helped the Mukti Bahini train their guerrilla fighters, uh, helped uh, create an atmosphere uh, within East Pakistan or uh, create bases and create space for the Indian Armed Forces to go and defeat the East Pakistani forces in uh, what is now Bangladesh. That war ended in 13 days. But Aran Kao's contribution will forever remain etched in history because that was the finest hour of the RNAW, uh, the 1971 war and the creation of Bangladesh. In fact, subsequently, uh, Aran Kao even had the advance uh, intelligence about a plot against Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the founder of Bangladesh. Uh, he, in fact, at the insistence of Mrs. Indira, Indira Gandhi, went and warned Mujibur Rahman personally that he, he was in danger and there was an attempt going to be made on his life by his own people which uh, Mujib uh, denied or Mujib sort of refused to believe and uh, paid with his life subsequently. He was assassinated with most of his family members. Only his two daughters, Sheikh Hasina and Sheikh Rehana, who were traveling uh, abroad in Europe somewhere, uh, were saved because they were not there. And the entire family was wiped out. But Aran Kao had such great uh, team with him that he knew in advance that this was going to happen. That was not his, not the only uh, you know, uh, deed that RN Kao or RNAW did. So creation of Bangladesh was not the only big achievement that RNAW had under RN Kao. The merger of Sikkim in 1975, again, done under the leadership of RN Kao and PN Banerjee, who was uh, a unique officer in a way that he headed both the IB, the Intelligence Bureau's regional bureau in Calcutta, and the RNAW's field office in Calcutta simultaneously. Perhaps the only man to have done so in the history of the two two organizations. 
P. N. Banerjee, alias Nath Babu. Uh, he uh, orchestrated the downfall of the Chogyal in Sikkim in 73-74. Uh, of course, he died uh, prematurely in 1974 while he was on a visit uh, to Dhaka. Uh, he apparently had a massive heart attack uh, in uh, one of the hotels in Dhaka in uh, 1974. And Arun Kaur lost one of his most able lieutenants uh, in uh, P. N. Banerjee, who passed away prematurely or died prematurely because of heart attack. in dhaka but their partnership yielded two major strategic uh, events in in the indian subcontinent one was of course the creation of bangladesh uh, along with uh, the indian armed forces and uh, the leadership provided by mrs indira gandhi and creation or uh, merger of sikkim into the indian union sikkim till then remember was a separate princely state uh, although it was uh, sort of dependent on india for its security but because sikkim was merged with india as one of its uh, states in the union of india today uh, india can actually hold on to its security uh, in the siliguri corridor and the strategic um, chumbi valley uh, which uh, borders tibet and uh, bhutan uh, in that tri junction which uh, was in the news in 2017 when the doklam incident with china happened so coming back to arun kao Uh, he of course uh, uh, retired or sort of uh, quit service in 1977 when Moraji Desai as prime minister uh, had a suspicion that he was very close to Mrs Indira Gandhi who was defeated in that historic 1977 elections and he wanted um, Arun Kaur's head so Arun Kaur quit prematurely uh, of course he made a comeback in 1980 when Mrs Indira Gandhi again came back to power and he became a special advisor to her on security matters uh it's a different matter that by 1984 on 31st october 1984 when mrs indira gandhi was assassinated uh by her sikh bodyguards uh arun kao uh, was coincidentally in beijing trying to uh, reach out to the chinese leadership at the behest of mrs indira gandhi who wanted to um, start off a renew uh, relationship with china Uh, 12 years after the disastrous 1962 war in which india was roundly defeated militarily uh, by uh, the chinese but that was not to be arun kao uh, then faded away and uh, subsequently passed away in 2002 but uh, he will remain a legend forever uh, in fact uh, this book uh, that i wrote uh, his biography called uh, arun kao gentleman spy master uh, was the uh, uh, sort of uh, one of the important uh, projects that i have done uh, it encapsulates uh, his life early life uh, how he struggled he lost his father at uh, the age of 5 his mother brought him up uh, he was a shy person right from the beginning but came into his own in the backroom operations and uh, leading teams in uh, different ways uh, clandestinely and otherwise so as i said uh, he was not a classical spy but he was a spy master who ran uh operations uh, on behalf of the rnw and before that uh, on behalf of the intelligence bureau uh, a very good leader who let his uh, subordinates uh, not only do work but also take credit and uh, also creator of institutions different uh, aspects of uh, institution building uh, was uh, seen during arun kao's leadership he uh, allowed people to flourish he allowed people to uh, have different skills and he used them wherever necessary uh, according to their skills and according to their uh, expertise that was arun kao uh, in in a nutshell in a sense you cannot capture uh, his life in 15 minutes of uh, this kind of a program but i thought i'll give you a glimpse of what uh, such people were uh, in the early years of india's uh, journey as an independent nation uh, trying to assert itself trying to establish itself and uh, one of the institution builders who can never be forgotten is arun kao ramnath kao in fact uh, he as i said passed away in 2002 uh, but leaves behind a legacy which uh, has to be upheld by his successors and the rnw uh, has of course uh, turned out to be one of the finest intelligence agencies in the world although it might need to pull up its socks to become more relevant in the current times but uh, that's a subject uh, that is to be discussed separately but for the moment 
that's all i have as far as arun kaur's life and times is concerned uh, do uh, read up uh, about him in my book or otherwise uh, there is likely to be a film on his um, role in the 1971 war based on my book uh, very soon a feature film uh, but otherwise uh, do read this book and you will get many more details about his working style about his uh, uh, knack for dressing up well and his punctuality his uh, kind and courteous nature all that has been captured in this book i thought i'll just give you an idea about what he was and why he needs to be remembered for his contribution to this nation that's all i have this week in simply nitin do keep watching uh, just not simply nitin but also strat news global and of course keep sending us feedback and subscribe to our youtube channel and like us on our social media handles uh, we will keep bringing to you these uh, little known aspects i won't say unknown aspects but little known aspects of different organizations different personalities and different events uh, in india and abroad till the next time is goodbye